。会在场的贵宾，还有所有关心区块链，还有智慧财产权。以及呃，在场的这个 Professor Rader、Professor e s l o t 还有王美心院士，还有呃陈春山教授啊、呃，还有各位朋友，大家好，大家午安。我是立法委员许玉仁，今天非常的不好意思，没有办法到现场跟大家交流，原因是今天立法院在举行这个表决，所以所有立法委员必须要待在议场。大家都知道，我一直以来非常关注呃区块链跟加密货币的发展，尤其区块链以一个去中心化的这个技术，然后在各种不同的场景上的运用，我认为这样子的一个新技术，还有新的呃商业模式，是真正可以为台湾带来机会。那事实上，在过去的一段时间里面，我也特别。有呃发布了十六项跟区块链相关应用的领域，而这些领域包括了智慧财产权、农业、医疗、教育，还有各种不一样的一个应用的场景。那我们希望区块链真正所带来的变革，是可以导入实体经济，还有去颠覆目前的商业模式。那今天呃非常开心呃这个呃王院士可以邀请到两位重量级的贵宾呃尤其是在这个智慧财产权上面的一个啊、呃、发展。那我们都知道以 blockchain 的技术在 intellectual property 上面是可以做一个非常好的一个应用。那我也非常开心看到台湾能够有机会来去参与。那事实上我认为一个好的创新一定要。产官学研互相的一个合作，然后透过 public private partnership PPP 这种模式，可以协助更多的企业，还有呃公家单位可以导入相关的技术，还有相关的这个应用。呃，所以今天真的非常开心，可以来透过录影的方式来致辞。那我也希望在日后，如果在任何区块链开发。尤其是在这个呃相关的一个场景的应用，还有实体经济的对接这个部分，有想法的朋友们可以跟我联系。那我最近也会跟经济部还有国发会来去提出整体区块链产业发展的大战略。那期待台湾可以成立区块链特区，然后真正把台湾打到打造成区块链之岛 （Blockchain Island）。Uh, so it is with my sincere hope、uh, that Taiwan can launch Blockchain Island and using the technology to transform different sectors. Starting with today's conference, I believe、uh, all the efforts will be consolidated, and we can join hands together to build a bright future with blockchain technology. Let's make Taiwan a blockchain island. I wish you. A very successful event today.、Um, if you have any question, I'm always here available to support and help nurture the industry. Bye bye. Thank you very much.、Uh, first, I need to apologize because、uh, at the beginning of the session, I didn't go through the classroom and shake the hand. I have to admit, I don't have the energy of Judge Rader, and I want to apologize for that.、Um, I, sub I subscribe to everything Judge Rader says. I think this is this is very important, and he let me put it in, in some other way. Judge Rader exemplified to you one of the greatest problems of patent market, which is the patent illiquidity, and this patent illiquidity is even stronger. And has even bigger problems on the SAT market, on the standard essential market. And the point of my presentation is that a revolution is coming, and that the revolution that we, our generation, me and and Judge Rader are initiating, is initiating. You, the young generation, will actually live with this.、Uh, And this, before describing what the revolution is, the revolution is 
stargating the illiquidity problem. So, illiquidity problem. Let me come back a little bit about this issue. You can see Judge Rader in his former career as a clearing mechanism. Parties go to Judge Rader to ask for a price. Usually, Judge Rader is right. <laughs> not, not always, but so usually. The only problem with Judge Rader is it's very expensive. I mean, the process is very expensive. You have to go through many, many, many patent experts, many, many discovery, and it takes time. The problems are, you know, uh, it's very, it's very expensive. So when you have a patent, basically, you don't have the management bandwidth or the capital to to do this this process. So either you don't do it, and it's a problem for an innovator, or you do this, and it consumes a lot of resources. The other problems that Judges Rader pointed out is that now you have, it's a worldwide problem. So it's not a US problem anymore, it's a, US, it's, it's a worldwide problem. So you have, you know, courts in Europe, different parties of Europe, uh, different countries in Europe, you have US courts, you have Chinese courts, and as, uh, you know, as judges, judge rates, they are in competition. And so if you want to have a worldwide view of what I need to pay as a mobile manufacturer, it really is a problem. Another concern about SEPs, and this is really specific about SEPs, is that SEPs stand really at the middle of patent law and competition law. Uh, standards are there for parties to communicate. Um, it involves a lot of efforts. It involves a lot of technicality. And it involves a huge market. So if you take all those forces, you basically have one problem, which is the market illiquidity of the, the, the patent illiquidity market. And you multiply this problem by 3, 10, 20, 30, because of the of this magnitude of the, of the problem. So, what's the revolution coming? We believe that there is two, two revolutions, and this, these are two, two, two technologies. First is blockchain, and second is artificial intelligence. Why blockchain? What is blockchain? I mean, anyone is familiar with blockchain? Distributed ledger technology. So instead of having one list of the students here in this room, Every student has the list of the students. One student is leaving, all the lists are completed. One more, the same. So the real benefit of this is that there is not one person controlling the truth. The truth is gathered around all members. So this is a true advantage. And when you are making a market, you cannot hide the price. The market is, in, is open. And one of the biggest problems in SAP, I mean, one of the problems, is that you didn't have price transparency. So coming back on blockchain, everybody has a list. So a lot of benefits, transparency, openness, not hackable. It has some, um, there's one drawback. Anyone in the room want to uh, voice the problem about blockchain? You 
have enough computer power exactly. to do it. Did you prepare? <laughs> Did we prepare? <laughs> no, very IT intensive. You know, if this is not one controller, everybody is controlling. I mean, everybody has its own, you know, IT power to basically control everybody. So it's, it's, it is one of the big issues of, of blockchain today. It's the environmental impact of, of blockchain. Let me, sorry. So this is what a blockchain could look like. You have you have nodes, and this is basically either companies or patent offices, and they're all connected to the blockchain, and they all write something on the blockchain, and everything is written on the blockchain, is visible by all. And what could they write? First, they can write, I, Japanese Patent Office, grant a patent to Huawei or to HTC on this, for this patent. And everybody is aware, not hackable. Uh, Another, issue, uh, another um, benefit is that you can openly assign patents. So when I sell a patent from A to B, before you had to go through a number of tasks, here, through the help of the smart contract, which is one of the big benefits of the blockchain, you have a consistency of tasks. All tasks are completed or none of the tasks are completed. So if I sell a patent to Judge Rader, automatically, or a patent family, automatically the patent offices are informed. In terms of, if we look at this from an SEP perspective, what's, what's the benefit? Judge Rader mentioned standard setting organizations, SSOs. Those are the ones organizing the consensus about uh, the standards. They ask the parties to declare patent, which is, which is a nice process. What's the problem with this process? Is that thanks to precedent in the history of SAP monetization, people are starting to game the system. So you have um, Korean companies, you have European companies that say, hmm, interesting. So I understand from, let's say, MPEG-2 or uh, MPEG-2 patents, that the more patents that you have, the bigger the, cake, uh, the bigger share of the cake I have. So let's game the system and find many, many, many patents. So you have an, you know, an inflation, an overinflation of patents, and those patents can be high number, and it's very difficult to track. So by Etsy, Etsy is the standard setting organization for 3G, 4G, 5G. They recognize themselves that their declaration database is falls by 42%, meaning if you withdraw all the assignment issue that can be solved by the blockchain, you take away 42% of their patents. So you're massively reducing the, um, the number of, of, of SAPs and you're massively reducing the number of problems. You're not completely solved, and this is why you have to come to the second hand of the revolution, which is artificial, artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? Oh, sorry, I don't have any slides. Uh, just view artificial intelligence 
as the fact that instead of having five experts going through prior art, technical documents, uh, uh, past cases, instead of having five experts like this, you have one million. And of course, you know, five experts can make mistakes, one million can make mistakes, but by adding numbers, you're reducing the level, I mean, you're increasing the level of confidence of your decision. And this is what will be the true benefit of artificial intelligence, is that you can process a huge amount of data that was before expensive, long, and cumbersome and with, with, with some mistakes. So how can we can, can it solve the um, essential pattern problem? Once you blockchain solved the assignment problem, it can solve two other problems that you have with essential patterns. Is one is validity, and second is essentiality. Remember, I told you that now patent players, patent uh, owners are gaming the system, meaning that they are really aggressively filing patents and declaring essential, declaring them essential. Which you can play a little bit, but if you play too much, then you end up with lousy patents. Lousy patents meaning it has been granted by offices, but if you scratch a little bit about the validity issue, you end up with huge prior art uh, concerns. Here, the, I mean, there's two solutions. Either you ask the patent office to do a better job, which is one option, but it will take time, or you have electronic tools to assess the validity. And this is exactly the promise of artificial intelligence. They can go far beyond and far, they can be far, be far more efficient at evidencing prior art and, and evidencing the validity of the of the patents. Same thing for essentiality. One of the problems of, uh, of SAPs is that they are declared essential to a specific patent, uh, to a specific standard. This is just a declaration. So if I want to, if I have a patent and I want to declare it essential to the USB connector, I can. Nothing prevents me to, 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 to say it's essential. So again, the problem of proving, evidencing the essentiality is crucial. And here again, the artificial intelligence will help you. And instead of having five judges going through, five, five uh, experts going into each jurisdiction, a long process, you'll have an automated help. So this is really the promise of blockchain and the promise of artificial intelligence. Will it come overnight? Probably not. Uh, will it come? This is certain. Blockchain will come. I, I myself talking with patent offices around the world, they all have a blockchain project. They all recognize that through the, through, because of the distributed nature of patents, which, because they have different offices, you don't have one, one worldwide patent office, you have different patent offices. Because of this dispersed nature, blockchain is the only solution that can solve the assignment problem. So it will come. There's absolutely no doubt for that. Artificial intelligence will come. Uh, there is no reason why you have to go through this expensive process of experts. Doesn't mean that you will not need expert, but you won't use them as you are using them now. So I conclude with the an invitation 
to you personally and to Taiwan in general to embrace those technologies very aggressively. Uh, some countries will lead this revolution, both blockchain and both artificial intelligence, and you know, each country has, and each individual has a, world, um, a role to play in this revolution. Thank you very much.